One of the things that I really admire about Yeshua is the way that he teaches. He's a very smooth individual, right? One of my favorite moments that most people miss is, well, he went into the temple, started flipping tables and kicking people out. And then he said something, right? He said, this is supposed to be a place of prayer. You've turned it into a den of thieves. And most people miss it because he had this ability that he'd use when he teach where he would speak to a spiritual reality while referencing a carnal reality. And he would do it so fluently and he still does it so fluently that people often miss the deeper thing that he's really talking about. Because in that moment, you know, the carnal interpretation that most people go away with is exchanging money for spiritual services because most people have never actually read that section in the Bible to begin with. They had that section of the Bible preached to them, taught to them. Most people have never read it. So when you read it, you find out that these guys were giving the, giving the people, desperate people, faulty equipment pretty much there were certain rules and regulations and standards that were supposed to be held for the materials that they were providing to the rest of the world the lambs that they were given were supposed to be without spot or blemish they was giving them people uh spotted and blemished uh lambs and all types of stuff right so it builds a picture you have to understand Whenever he was teaching about the tabernacle or the temple, he was always talking about you. <laughs> he was always talking about us. He referenced it because he saw a moment, right? In the carnal that matched the reality that he wanted to share with the rest of the world. Because typically people walk away and they go, well... We got to get rid of these vendor tables. I have to do everything for free. We're not supposed to accept money. And you've missed his message entirely. When he says this, when he says that you have turned this into a den of thieves, this is supposed to be a house of prayer. Oh, what he's really talking about is you. He's not talking about the carnal manifestation, he's talking about the inner world of an individual that would even lead to a manifestation like that because it was a one-to-one -one comparison. Pretty much saying, you've turned this into a place where you've kept the presentation, yet the quality of it is under the standard, yet you're still charging people for it. See, it's not the exchange of the money that's the problem. It's the quality of service. He says, you are supposed to be a living altar. But instead, you are robbing people of their identity and refusing to access your own. You are giving people things out of the appearance of, of spirituality and they're not getting the spirituality because what happens well if they're supposed to be you're talking about these offerings and stuff in the natural if it has to be these particular ways it has to fit a certain standard to even be received by god and they sell it to you anyway that means when you go to when they went to use that it backfired it didn't work <laughs> oh my goodness so Yeshua in that moment is really speaking to a system, a system that most of us are still in. I left it a long time ago. <laughs> but a system that most of us are still in, and even if you leave one appearance of that system, a lot of people jump from one system to another system, and it's the same issue, which is that you find yourself preoccupied in the work that gives no substance, which gives no value, which has no value for the accolade and the appearance of something spiritual. 
sorry, Christians, I got to pick on y'all a little bit. I love y'all, but, you know, I, I used to be one of y'all. So y'all are my best. Uh, I, I have the best experience with y'all. I know too many people who spent 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years in church. And the only proof that they are in that environment, the only thing that they have left is the ability to say, oh, I've been doing this for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You get the point. It, tra it didn't transform a thing in their life. That is a den of thieves because at no point did they access their identity. And I blame leadership because I've talked to enough pastors behind closed doors to know that sometimes they know that they have never heard God and they don't have a message and they're relying on the people to be naive enough to come in and still give them money. <laughs> so they'll come out and give you something. And people have the man of God complex. They'll accept whatever it is the pastor gives them. Sound familiar? They'll accept whatever the priest gave them because these are the priests. These are the men and women of God. No, they're robbing you with the appearance of something spiritual and beneficial. When you could be growing in your identity, when you could be growing in stature, you're instead preoccupied with the operations of a carnal system and a carnal structure. But it has the appearance. I've said this before. Religion is the fan club. The kingdom is the real deal. The fan club has no accolades. There's a bunch of football team or just sports team in general. Fan clubs doesn't mean anyone's on the team. Likewise, Christianity is just a fan club. The kingdom. Oh, that's government. There's your dominion. That's that's the dominion y'all are looking for. I've said this and I mean it and I mean it in every culture and in every religion. Any spiritual leader that's giving you or inviting you to their religion is robbing you. And this is because they're inviting you to another distraction with the appearance of spiritual growth. And there might be just enough spiritual essence present for you to think that God is moving in a place. That this is where God wants you to be. That this is your calling. It might You might see enough to where you might gain some aspirations within that system. Yet be off track the entire time. You're being robbed. Because typically when people look at it, they're thinking about the idea of exchanging money. Now, funny thing that I found out, because even I've gotten this criticism before. Because... I don't believe there's a problem with exchanging money for spiritual service <laughs> on its own. Now, mind you, most of what I do for y'all is free. I have a few things like I have a school that costs money and I have an archive that costs money. And that's because Holy Spirit said so, but not here to defend me. Just want to talk. I've noticed that people, right? And it's the same idea. It's the same consciousness that deals with this. These same individuals who might have a problem with a price tag for other people will gladly sign up for seminary school, pay thousands of dollars, get in debt for no substance. People go to seminary school, they don't come out spiritual, nor do they come out educated, nor do they come out with any form of expertise, yet you've gotten thousands of dollars in debt. Den of thieves, because you didn't even get the spirituality that was on the billboard. People will go to Oral Roberts, not even come out with an anointing to heal the sick. <laughs> Den of thieves, robbed of any actual quality, given an accolade and an appearance of a thing. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. You see what I'm saying here? See, these same people have no problem, right? Uh, if you believe that Jesus paid it all <laughs> and you shouldn't be paying money for anything, well, make sure to tell your light company that first. You in Texas, tell Energy that first. 
um, and then uh, have a conversation with Jesus while you sit in the dark. Money itself isn't the problem. Shoot, even the Bible tells you money isn't the problem. It's what people do for money and what people do because of money. What people do with money, that's the issue. Like, yeah, there's the easy verse I could quote about it's the love of money, not even money that's the root of all evil. Well, that's one part. But it's what people do with it. Money on its own is neutral. It's just a tool. Now, mind you, there are systems with substance in them. I've taken courses in the past that were of substance. I've taken courses in the past. I would love my money back. Um, <laughs> I've read books that were horrible. I've read books that changed my life. Think about... So those of you who, shoot, you might still be in the church system. Think about how long you've been there and how much of that 10% you've been given. And then also think about how much you've actually grown as a spiritual being. And see if it adds up. See, churches don't have, they, they have a no refund policy, so you can't really get your money back, but. You know, that same money that you've been investing into a system that's not giving anything back to you can be used to invest in your own spirituality, your own growth, your own expertise. You can use that same 10% to better yourself. Because let's go back to talking about this should be like David's tabernacle. This should be a house of prayer. You should be a house of prayer. Well, what's a house of prayer? A house of prayer is a living altar. It's a place where heaven and earth are constantly in interaction with one another. It's a place where you live as an outlet for that which is above to interact with that which is down here in the below. You have <laughs> the opportunity. You have the opportunity to move through the earth, revealing all the realms of the spirit that you're acquainted with. That's a house of prayer. See, a house of prayer isn't even just a room full of people praying in tongues for hours and hours. And that's amazing. I like doing that, too. I recently just hosted 24 hours of prayer. We did some of that. Nothing's wrong with it. But being a house of prayer, because you're still thinking about the building. It's not about the building. You are the building. You are the tabernacle and the temple, the dwelling place, the abode. That is the revelation of the Feast of Tabernacles that we're actually still in uh, until Wednesday. <laughs> it's the revelation that I am the dwelling place. Therefore, all of the things associated with the dwelling place begin to manifest in and around and through you. Not only that, you're a mobile home. That's what makes the tabernacle so beautiful is that it's mobile. Which means you get to move this altar. You are a mobile altar changing the world around you as you go into the world. Oh, the worst place for all these tabernacles to be is sheltered up and hidden together behind some walls. You know, getting a light and then putting it under a lampshade. Sounds like Sunday morning, don't it? That's the worst place for people to be. Because that's typically the only place that people allow themselves to be spiritual. Which means you're only spiritual around other spiritual people. Which means all the people that whose lives you could be transforming go unchanged because you don't reveal your true nature to the rest of the world. And that's the world that needs it. Robber right? <laughs> Thief, robber. It's a culture of robbing and thievery. And it's ingrained in us. Now, we can be untrained in it. Absolutely, you can get delivered from that. You can be free from that. But you have to acknowledge that you're in it. For a fair amount of people who are going to listen to this, they're going to spend the majority of this session trying to defend their church. <laughs> Instead of really evaluate how spiritual they really live their lives. Because I've had pastors tell me, well, I've never heard the voice of God. I don't even think you could hear God. Yet they're preaching every Sunday, which means what in the world are they giving you? 
the people in the pews believed that God gave him a message. He said, God ain't never talked to me before. So he knows he's robbing y'all, but y'all have a belief. A belief that says this is the man of God. God wouldn't have allowed me to hear him. If God didn't want me to hear it, God wouldn't have let me. No, 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 no. Take some responsibility. You got tricked and you can choose to leave. You can choose to back out of a system like that. Just as God didn't send you, it doesn't take a special ritual for you to decide not to go back. Because it's all about the quality of spiritual growth that you're getting. If you're in a place and you're in a community where you're being challenged, where you're growing, where you're tapping into the things of the spirit. And when I say tapping into the things of the spirit, I'm not just talking about enough to heal the sick, enough to release fire and people fall down. Not just enough for you to impart joy and people start laughing uncontrollably. That is amazing. Don't want to stop those manifestations. Let's increase them. Not just enough to quote unquote minister in a service. But enough for you to start to envelop and get comfortable with the fact that you and God are the same thing. That you are both royalty and divinity. That you are a moving altar that if the earth were a canvas and God used a pen, you would be the point in which the will is written in the natural world. You are the touching point, the valve where heaven and earth meet. If you're not tapping into that, because there's a, see that sounded, that might've sounded beautiful and poetic to some of y'all and y'all are like, Ooh, I want to use that. Uh, uh, I need you to know that. I need you to believe that. I need you to live from that. See, I don't I don't get much from people just hearing me talk, right? I love the results that come as a byproduct of that. Don't just don't be wowed by lyricism in wordplay. A lot of teachers are just good lyricists. They'll say some of the most mundane things, but they'll say it in such a way that y'all walking away talking about who he sure did preach and he ain't said a word. So don't get wild by wordplay. I used to read the dictionary as a kid. I have a good vocabulary. I know how to use the English language, but that's on its own isn't revelatory. Don't just stop at being impressed by the wordplay. You have to you have to make a demand for spiritual substance and growth. And it's at this point, many of you are realizing you don't need the system that you're in if you got to do it all yourself. Yeah, you have to demand spiritual growth. You have to prioritize your spirituality. It's not going to happen on its own. Matter of fact, spirituality is hard. It takes work. This isn't accidental. No one accidentally progresses spiritually. It takes work. It takes intention. There, this idea that you're looking for that one day you're just going to wake up and the power of God is going to come over you and you're going to quicken into a new person. Kill that. Kill it. It's not going to happen. Even for those of you mystics out here that are looking for one day when the quickening power of God is just going to hit and y'all going to have all these superpowers and ability die to it. It's not happening. Not in that way. It's not. See, I'm going to do a separate session on this, but it goes with the topic, so I'm going to touch on it a little bit. But the fact that you keep putting things off in the future is proof that you don't know who you are right now or that you're uncomfortable with who you are right now. And whatever system you're dedicating your time to, it could be Islam, it could be Buddhism, it could be Hinduism, it could be Christianity, whatever you're dedicating your time to. If it's not producing that resolve in you where you're getting comfortable as God, it's robbing you. And if you belligerently go back because you think it owes you something or you owe it something, then you're robbing yourself. Going back into a religion or staying in a place that you know no longer benefits you or has never benefited you just out of a sense of obligation is no different than helping people empty your house. Helping robbers empty your house. It's no different. So I'll leave y'all with that. Um, thank y'all. Um, if you're looking to support or gain access to my full catalog, I have 
hundreds and hundreds of teachings available on Patreon. Links in the description down below. Or if you just want to support Patreon down below. Um, I also have a healer class coming up in January. Uh, I'm going to be teaching y'all how to heal yourselves, how to heal other people, even getting into the topic of immortality. So if that's something that you're interested in, sign up. It's, well, links in the description down below, but schoolofthempire.com. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Until next time, y'all be blessed. Later.